Welcome back, everybody. Today we have something really special because this is gonna be the very first video of multiple videos coming up. Put quite simply, it's gonna be the greatest educational content the game has ever seen. I'm going above and beyond and finding the absolute best players that the game has ever seen. I'm interviewing them and I'm taking all the helpful things that they say and I'm gonna condense it down in this video for you guys to understand. Up first, we're gonna have Bravo Foxtrot. He is absolutely 0.1% top of all DD players in the game, and it's not even close. I asked Bravo to write down some things. He, he thought about it for about a week. I said, write down some things about what gets DD players killed. I feel like that's a pretty good problem to solve, and he came back with a lot of information. So let's jump right into it. Well, what do I think gets DDs killed the most? Me watching others, uh, and I and I kind of wrote down. I got five main topics here, uh, and like I said, some of these are so common sense that it it could be insulting to listen to, and then some of them will kind of vary up to like your mid level tier players, uh, that stuff they may not think about, but it's probably not going to be news to, to some of your most experienced guys. That's fine. Um, all right, so. The first topic is going to be uh, being selective when you smoke. Uh, the second topic will be like islands, beaching. Uh, the third will be enclosed areas. The fourth will be driving around corners blind. And the fifth will be driving perpendicular and catching blind torpedoes. Uh, and then it'll lead into a, a final word and like, I don't know. I'll, I'll leave that for when we get there. Okay. Um, so starting off with being selective when you smoke. All right, this is this is one of the lower tier, brand new players kind of a deal. Uh, getting torpedoed in your smoke usually means you've been you've been sitting stagnant for way too long. Uh, for example, Americans who have really really good smoke get super complacent with this stuff, and they uh, when they just you know they want to make the full use of that smoke. Even if they're going forward and back, you're you're a target. So. Get in there, do what you got to do. Hopefully you're being mindful of when you're actually kicking it off. But perhaps wait to, to smoke until you know where the enemy DDs are at. Or specifically, like, right after they've thrown their torpedoes so you know you can get the most out of it. You don't have to be worried about it. If you're going against, say, I don't know, a Summers, something that has, like, a minute and a half, or, like, one of those Japanese torpedo boats that, that has, like, the really long reloads, like a minute and a half, get them to dump their torpedo load, <laughs> as bad as that sounds. Uh, and then and then make advantage of that smoke if you have to farm a battleship a cruiser or whatever else have you Don't be afraid to use that in a place that's advantages for a friendly as well um, Two, getting sonar in smoke uh, Some of you guys have to learn this the hard way. I did quite a few times Be careful when you smoke against something that has extremely strong sonar whether it be a German battleship or uh, German cruiser or just like a Loyang Z35 knowing those ranges I've seen too many people but even against me uh, Specifically like where they just oh shit Z35 I start gunning them down because I got them in advantageous place where their team doesn't have a great place to like fire on me And I just start working them down and guess what they do they fuck, they fuck smoke and then what do I do well? I use that smoke to my advantage. I, I don't use mine. I hold on to mine. I push into that smoke even sonar up, I can keep gunning them down most of the time if I got the right angles. And then they're they're shit out of luck. They can't see me. Their smoke concealed me effectively. You know what I mean? Getting radar and smoke, I think that's kind of self-explanatory. You know, in your ranges, they used to have a really, really good uh, little radar plotter. Have you ever seen that where they have, like, the expanding circles? And then it shows you the actual ranges of each individual uh, ship that has radar with the duration and its range. Uh, yeah, I have. Yep. Cool. I don't know if they've updated that. I know that was something Papa Nicholas used to do way back in the day. Um, but that thing was super, super useful, especially if you're just starting to play the game and trying to figure out what's what. Uh, so being being mindful about radar and smoking, because, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it at least once, and it's usually the newer players, the second they get radar, they start dropping smoke. For, for what reason? What What is that going to change? You know what I mean? It will change the fact that this, the second your radar goes down, they go. They should go unspotted, but I mean, they just wasted like 20, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe even 40 seconds of smoke if they're using it against the Minotaur. You know what I mean? 
So yeah, and then also back to the same idea of doing it against the Lo Yang and the Z35. You may also be potentially protecting them, the cruiser as well, that's radaring you. Uh, if you're smoke, if you're the only person spotting them, you smoke up, they keep your radar, nobody's spotting them, and they just get to beat on you with no, no repercussions to what's happening. All right, uh, and then lastly, uh, this is something I like to do, and I'm sure if you've played with me or against me, you've, you've seen me do it quite a bit, baiting shots at a battleship. Um, if you got nobody else to, to spot for you, right? Like, this is probably more prevalent to something like a Lightning, Daring, Jutland. Something that has a lot of smokes. Getting out there, getting getting the right angle. You don't want to be directly broadside to him when you start doing this. But usually about a 45 degree towards or a 45 degree away is, is my choice. So I can get most of my guns on them. And I'll fire once or twice and I'm going to start and I'll pay attention, really close attention to their turrets. The second their turrets look like they're about to fire on me and, and I see that flash, I pump brakes, turn hard as shit, and, and pop my smoke. And what do I get out of that? I get a free 20 seconds of shooting at them. Uh, because their their concealment in smoke is usually 15 plus kilometers, you know what I mean? Uh, so you can you can essentially kind of spot for yourself with your smoke if you do that. But it is risk versus reward. If you do that shit against a conqueror and you don't time it right, or, or they're smart enough to, to aim right, well, you can lose modules and or life. All right, so islands beaching, uh, paying attention to your surroundings. I, I've seen this a bunch of times, saw it once last night. Um, you get you get tunnel vision. You're you're gunning somebody while while they're actively chasing you, whether it be through islands, through whatever, and then all of a sudden you run into a beach and you're pretty much screwed. Maybe you'll have a smoke and it gives you a chance to to move around, whatever else like that, hoping they don't have radar, sonar, it's, etc. But there is an easy way around this. I mean, I still make this mistake occasionally myself, but using the uh, preset number five. Um, I know you had mentioned you, you also use preset five, using the, the left bumper for me. It pretty much shoots you up into a third, like a little bit higher, like an elevated third person view. It'll keep your guns locked in the same direction so you don't lose that, that general area where you want your guns to go and they don't start swinging all fucking wild and you can pretty much maneuver yourself. Doing that, like every, like get in the habit of doing that. Uh, practice becomes, becomes perfect, you know what I mean? Becomes habit, becomes a part of your gameplay and it'll just keep you from doing some stupid shit like that. Like, I've, I've gotten better at it, but I still do it. I use it a lot in battleships um, for the third turret. Yeah, if I, if I know that I want three guns on target and my gun's on the right side, well, after I fire the front two, I just barely go on the left side of the nose and I start that really long process of doing the full rotation on the back side. Then I can look back to the right and fire again, then go back to the left, keep spinning that gun. So it's really... It's it's really useful. I probably I'm play a, a 50 or 60 percent of my game in overview camera. Yeah, it's kind of like I said. I the, the word is abuse. I definitely use it too much. And uh, last but not least, least if you're in one of those situations where where you know you don't have the opportunity to do that that 360 view, the third person, whatever else have you. I mean, you can also try and use the islands, but give yourself room. Uh, plenty of my friends. Have, I think yourself included, have like looked at the map and tried to tried to guide themselves looking at the map while they're trying to keep guns on target or whatever else it is, to avoid torpedoes, and and they end up clipping the side of that island just trying to drive by the map. Give yourself room to play with because it it, it is not pinpoint accurate. Is the best way I can put that. All right. So number three is going to be enclosed areas. Uh, these are the games that like Sleeping Giant, uh, Trap. There's a couple of them. Uh, they have those areas that are that are pretty tight circles. There's not a lot of place for you to, not a lot of room to maneuver, for lack of better words. Um, I usually avoid these places like the plague, especially if there's something unaccounted for, like a Des Moines, a Colbert, uh, Minotaur, something of that nature, because that is that is a very easy way to get yourself killed early game. So typically, unless I know I'm fairly safe. I got a I got an aircraft carrier spot and stuff. I'll avoid enclosed areas for the first little bit, unless I know that uh, unless I know that there's an easy egress point. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a couple of those. Like I used the word, uh, the map trap. There is a couple of egress points there, but unless you're you're backing into it uh, or just playing in between those really really light, uh, almost I don't know. They're barely like sand dunes. 
they don't really rise that much above the water unless you're doing it there i mean you really don't have a place to egress except for running around that big center island hoping somebody's not coming in the other direction the fewer entry points the more dangerous i think that's kind of self-explanatory i mean yeah it could be advantage to you if you're like a hollow emilio or something like that 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 can really benefit from something like coming around a blind corner and and yellowing somebody but that's that's never been my play style but i always play to survive to win and then last uh, have 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 at least a really good exit plan, if not two. Uh, so like Hotspot is a good example of this one. Remember which cap it is? It's the one that's the uh, the center on the uh, eastern side. There is a bunch of avenues in there, and there's a bunch of avenues out. When you go in there, get get an understanding of where your exits are, and and always have one to two immediately available to you if 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 one of those DD killers is 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 pushing in. Like, Hotspot isn't one I'm going to avoid beginning of the map because there's plenty of places to, to bounce around and hide, and especially if you've got some good support behind you. The chances are they're not going to just drop straight in. But still run to those people that act like it's AI. So have those egress points. Number four, driving around corners blind. This is <laughs> this is one of those ones I have to keep learning uh, over and over again. It's early game, especially... Uh, Go, go around corners wide. You want to watch out for those those same DD killers, right? And if you if you don't have somebody actively on the other side of that island or spotting that angle or hell, you don't even know if they have a super concealed American cruiser or something like that, right? Uh, drive around wide. Give it give it three four kilometers. Spend that extra thirty seconds in the beginning of the game to go around a little bit wider, so you exact you know exactly what you're driving in on. Um, it's it's embarrassing and I hate doing it when I do it. Uh, but but it happened. And this is one of those ones uh, that will that will start to diminish late game. When you start to get down to those key moments in a game where like time is of the essence, if you don't get on their cap and start blocking points in the next 10 seconds, you will certainly lose regardless of you living or not. Uh, then hey, you know what? It's it's probably worth just going for it, right? Um, twist and track is this is one of those times that twist and track can be super beneficial. Knowing where the closest guy is, I mean, hell, if he, if it's spotted and you know there's no DDs on the map and it's definitely pointing at this at this battleship that's 10 kilometers away, well, you know there's not somebody waiting right behind this corner for you. So using that uh, little bit of information to your advantage. And lastly, and this is kind of like more towards the the mid tier experience. Uh, the more you division, the harder you probably learn this. Uh, being aware of of enemy DDs, which you need twist and track for that, right? Uh, and they're most likely targets. So, you, say you and I are in a division, right? You're you're sitting behind me in a battleship. I'm in a DD, and I know there's a DD directly off my my nose, right? I don't want to ever drive, right? I try to avoid driving directly between those two points, right? Uh, because that's just me asking for for trouble. What I'll typically do is offsetting yourself just like a little bit to where you can spot those torpedoes that are going to be a threat to your, your div mates or that battleship or whoever it is you're supporting but don't put yourself in the direct line of fire now this doesn't really account for people that try to blind torpedo right like occasionally when i'm sitting on torpedoes and there's no no valid targets in range uh i'll, I'll be trying to torp somebody would be a twist and trip right seeing where they're going where they've been trying to get an idea of what their next best move is and that's the area I'm going to twerk. If somebody's doing that at you, don't just drive broadside to wherever that, that twist and track is at. Alright? Get yourself, I mean I say 45 degree angle, whatever works best for you, <clears throat> whether you're trying to close or whether you're trying to trying to drive away and that, that way at least when you see the torpedoes you can pump the brakes and you can turn hard and you can usually it's some really, really good turns and, and have a better chance of avoiding those torpedoes. The smaller your profile is, the better. And hell, if you're driving away, the, the slower the torps are going to seem because, well, you're doing 30, 35 knots. That takes away from what the torpedo is doing, right? And with a lot of those, I know I know some of these are, are lower tier, and hopefully it's not insulting to anybody's intelligence, but I'm trying to cover all the, the lower bases before I, I ever think of trying to step up to something that's more complicated. And with with everything else that I just said, late game, if you're all about the wins like I am and, and most of my friends, late game will dictate a lot of your actions. You will start to throw a lot of the fucking rulebook out as 
as the time cuts down and, and things have to be done to, in order to win, right? So, come around islands as, as short as you want, smoke whoever, wherever you want, whenever you want, uh, if if the game is on the line and, and you got no other choice. But starting off the game, playing to survive, being situationally aware, having a good egress point, just just a few things to help you stay alive a little bit longer, maybe make some better decisions. All right, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Well, I think that was absolutely awesome. Hey, round of applause, everybody, for Bravo Foxtrot taking his time out of his day to come over here and lay down some of these points, trying to help out the community, trying to help these people learn. You're awesome, Bravo. I appreciate it. I'm sure a lot of these guys are going to appreciate it. And until next time, everyone out there, have a great day. Be good. Peace.